this is Paddy and welcome to part 3 of my flash tutorial. Before we actually move on, um, I'm just going to explain how you use mask effects and if you look at my timeline at the top, you'll see I've got three layers here and in the background I've got this image on my stage and above that I've got the same image but it's twice as big and in the top layer I've got a basic shape tween of a line curving upwards and then returning to its position and all the contents within this layer are going to be in, fe in effect um, my mask animation so you could have a graphic symbol in there that plays um, a visual effect such as ripples dissipating to the outside perimeter um, it could be anything really but once you actually convert this layer to a mask layer it's it's going to remain a mask layer uh, for the duration of your actual movie so if you want layers that are being affected by the mask to um, move out of the actual range of that layer you can drag them to the right which I'll show you in a second so now I've got this all set up I'm going to right click the top layer and click on mask now this has converted this top layer to a mask layer and you can see that layer 10 is being affected by this mask if I drag layer 9 to the right you can see that that becomes affected as well but if I drag it to the left and down it's not affected by the mask now so everything in layer 10 is being affected by the mask and you can see that's how the effect actually looks it's good for stuff like CSI titles and stuff like that you might have seen uh, Break Yourself Part 3 I think it was uh, where I did a CSI spoof so I'm just going to delete those layers then I'm going to delete that from the library because I'm not going to use it in this part. Um, basically in this part I wanted to cover how to work with the sound in your project um, whether it's music or voiceovers or whatever and uh, I'm also going to go over some action script which is the programming language of Flash and it can be quite complicated but I'm just going to do the basics basically. Um, I'm going to teach you how to make your own flash preloader which basically loads everything, all the content within your movie um, and then it presents a button which allows you to actually play your movie. So let's cover sound first. Next I'm going to show you how to incorporate sound into your project. Uh, I have a folder of useful sound effects and I've frequently used them across the years but you often have to find new sounds for specific projects. Good sites to check out are partnersinrhyme.com and sounddogs.com and here you can find royalty free downloads. I find it's best to use .wav format um, but you can also use a large range of formats such as mp3 etc. So start out by collecting music and sound effects in a format you want to use um, and then I'd create a folder in your actual library called SFX which stands for sound effects or something of that caliber so whenever you import any sounds to your library you can just store them easily inside that folder so now create a new layer and call it sound effects and then lock that layer because you're not going to have any actual images or anything in there, you're just going to use blank keyframes with bits of sounds on them. And then I'm just going to import a random sound. You can see I've got two sound effects folders here. your 
sound. I'll show you how to do um, animation with mouths referring to speech later on. Uh, but just for the purposes of demonstrating using sound in your project, once you've actually imported your sound, you can see it's stored in the library. And here you can preview it just by pressing the play button. Um, and then I'm just going to drag that into my sound effects folder. So now it's stored in there and I don't need to worry about it messing up the library. Um, and then you need to select when your sound's actually going to start. So I'm going to put this on frame 6. That's the first time you hear it. And you can set your sounds to different uh, effects and synchronizations. Um, so where it says sound on your properties bar at the bottom, find your sound and click it. And you can see in this keyframe, where I've inserted a keyframe, how the sound or the waveform actually starts. So what I need to do now is insert frames for the actual duration of the sound. And you always know when a sound has um, finished playing because there won't be an actual dark blue line here. So you can see that's the point where the sound actually ends. So I tend to insert a blank keyframe after the sound is played just so it doesn't actually repeat if you're, you're continuing on your actual uh, timeline or playing through. Now, <coughs> I'm just going to show you the different synchronizations. The, the one that I use most commonly is called Stream and uh, I find this is the best one. It basically plays the sound for the actual frames it's in. So if I didn't want this sort of wet part of the sound here, I could insert a keyframe just here and it would just play the start of the sound. But regardless of how many frames you've put in, if you've got it set on event, then when the actual movie's playing through and it reaches keyframe 6 with this in, it could be set up like this. It's just going to play that sound and it's going to play it once. Um, but the thing is, if you actually paused the movie at, at frame 8, for instance, then uh, it would carry on playing the rest of this sound that's here. So it's good if you have a specific point where you want the sound to just play once and play all the way through. But if you're using an MP3 song, for instance, and you don't want to play the whole song, um, it's best just to use stream. For instance, if you had an MP3 that was 3 megabytes and you only needed the first 10 seconds, then your project would be, you know, a whole 3 megabytes bigger because it'd have to play the whole file. So, stream it is. You've also got start and stop, but these are more like the action script settings, if you will. Um, I'll also show you the effects next. Uh, note this repeat section here. You can also have your sound looping indefinitely, uh, but I tend to leave it, leave it on repeat one because it basically means it's just going to play through once and then you're not going to hear it again. So if you click on the keyframe with the sound in, and if you look on effects, you've got a range of effects here, such as playing out, out of the left speaker, the right speaker, uh, fading from left to right, fading in, fading out, or if you click custom, or alternatively if you hit edit, you basically see your waveform here, and this is like Audacity or SoundForge or programs of that nature, and you'll see at the top left, you've got a little square and this marks just below the maximum um, volume level, if you will. It's like kind of like the amplitude. So at the top is the highest, at the bottom is the lowest. And I think this is the left speaker here, and this is the right speaker. So if I just wanted to play out, out of the left, you can see I've got this effect on the left channel here. And this is down on the right, and this is up on the left. And then if you suppose that I wanted the sound to become a bit quieter here and then return to how it is here, I could
click this point here and it creates a new envelope point if you will and then if I click down here again I've got another point where the actual volume moves down and then the amplitude increases so I can zoom out to see the whole thing and the actual duration of the sounds and then I can also have a live preview just here so you can you can kind of hear how that goes down but I'll make it silent at this point so there you've got a, an actual break in the sound so that's it it's pretty simple really um, it might take a while to actually synchronize the actual sound to your actual content you've got playing here but you can literally drag all the keyframes including the blank keyframe at the end that involves the sound and then literally drag the start point 